everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this Book of Tricks style easel card. So it's the Book of Tricks style book card that I made for Christmas 2018. And um, I was looking back through the old videos and stuff and I thought about making it as an easel card. And there's some really nice styles like this on YouTube already. But I just thought that one was a large card and there's a few people that did comment and said it'd be nice to have it a bit smaller. So I've made this so it fits on, you know, it's a 5x7. It's absolutely beautiful. Some of you that watched the live Facebook craft along where I actually made this will see a few changes because... Um, and I'll talk through them as we get into the tutorial, but this bit at the bottom's kind of changed a little bit. Um, I've redone this because we were having a bit of a laugh and it, it stuck down initially and it didn't look great. And then I've also now actually added my number onto this one because I said this would be these are great showstopper cards, you know, really special cards, perfect for a wedding. This could be a 50th anniversary and you could have happy anniversary here, but this one is actually a birthday card. If you're not familiar with an easel card, so basically it will be as flat as it can be. These are, you know, bulky cards. And I've actually tested it because we were speaking in the live as well about, you know, envelopes for this. And I said, I think it'll fit into the box envelope. Then I was a bit unsure, but I've tried it and it does fit. So I'll show you this in a moment. And I've got the tutorial already on the channel for this one here. But that's how it would be when the person receives it. Inside here is where I will be writing my message. And you've got this space here as well. And then it just stands up and kind of props against its stopper here, because this is raised on foam, but the flowers are also stopping it moving. But if I just kind of hold it like so, a bit closer so you can see all that gorgeous detail. It's absolutely stunning. I've heat embossed the happy birthday there, and I've heat embossed all of the leaf, leaf? all of the leaf trim there, or that um, kind of vine. Love this, the little bow. You'll see I changed that as well. I did mix green with it, but the green behind the pink, it started to look a bit brown and muddy and I didn't like it, so I've changed that. I've added the little dangle there and then obviously that 50th and I'll show you the supplies there. So it does all fold and it fits into this. So this is my, I think it might be slightly more than one inch, maybe not. No, it is one inch, but it does fit and I've just continued the 50th there, so that says happy 50th birthday. But you can see here, it does go in because this is what I'm using this is how I'm sending it all so just pop it in there it just slides in nicely and then that will all close up so but there you can see it all you know fits really nicely so yeah this is what we're going to be making so let's crack on okay so the supplies I've used are from kit number seven or box number seven which was by Simply Made Crafts for the Paper Craft Society so if you've got that that's what I've used for the lovely pattern paper let me take it back out of here just so I can use it as a reference all of this gorgeous paper on the front the sentiment all of these die cuts they're all from that kit but you know you can easily make it with whatever you have. And again, I always say it, but if you're a member of the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group, already lots and lots of people have been sharing their versions from the Craft Along, and they're gorgeous. There's some beautiful ones there. So if you do want more inspiration, then you know head over there and have a look. This is what I've used for the numbers. Really nice, because I love that they have all of the... I don't know what it's called, but it's the, you know, th and the ist and the and. <laughs> They are called on here, Ultimate Number and Overlay Die Set, Landmark, Occasion, Landmark Occasions Collection. It's by um, Christina Griffiths, Card Making Magic. Again, I'll link it below um, and you get all those bits with it as well. But gorgeous, lovely big letters. So I've gone ahead and done loads, I've curved it, I've done all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to talk you through everything. So like I said, this is a 5 by 7 but you know, if you know how to make easel cards, then you can just do this any size you want. So I've gone and prepared all of those pieces, but first of all, you want your card blank. So if you've already got a pre-made 5x7 card, you just want to open it up and along the 10 inch side, you will already have your score line at 5 and then your score again at 7.5. If you're making it from scratch, you want a piece of 10 by 7 and again score there at 5 and then at 7.5. You're then going to burnish both score lines, so your first one is your one to just make it that 5x7 card blank and then this one again will become the easel. So both mountain folds and it's going to be like that. And I've also rounded the corners off there with my corner punch because I just thought it looked quite nice on the top. Alright, so that's what you need there. Then to go inside here, I've got my mats and layers already done there. This is again using the striped paper from the kit. And this, the kind of glittery silver paper there is six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then the striped piece on top is six and a half 
by four and a half. Again, all these measurements will be in my blog, and I'm going to stick that one inside there. Okay, if you want to wrap some ribbon around this and all that kind of stuff, then you want to do that beforehand. But this stopper is then going to go on the top. So what I've done with this one here, because some people will be like, well, how did she do that? Because I was saying in the live, there is this lovely stamp here. It's really nice. And it's this long, like, vine. And when I done the one on the live, I stuck it, but I didn't like that you had the raw kind of the beginning of it and then that nice end. So what I ended up doing is I redone it and in the middle here, can you see there's a slight overlap? So I stamped one half in that direction and then I flipped the stamp and I stamped the other way that, you know, that way and then just joined it because I'm going to be popping these flowers on there. So you're not going to see that. But now you get that nice finish at both ends. OK, so for the stopper, the silver piece is six and three quarters by one and a half. And then the white, pe white piece is six and a half by one and a quarter. Okay, again, I will stick that on there in a moment. Then for the actual book itself, so I've got this piece here, and this is seven by five, and it's going to stick directly onto this piece here. Now I did curve this and then realized actually it needs to just stay flat. Okay, and that score line through the middle there is just a guide but you don't you don't need to do it on this piece so just ignore that but you're not going to really see it anyway but that needs to be five by seven it's going to stick right on there and then you can see when the card folds flat it's the same size so just five by seven and just round off the corners if that's what you want to do these ones here you'll need to add these kind of arch shapes you know um, the curves to them so this is a piece of copy paper and this is six and seven eighths of an inch by four and seven eighths. I just felt it needed that white layer. You can just see it there, okay? So it doesn't have to be copy paper. You can use normal, you know, stronger paper if you want. And then I've got this piece here, which is six and three quarters by four and three quarters. Did I say six and three quarters? Yeah, six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And that's gonna go on the top. You'll then want another piece that is four and a half by six and a half, okay? And all of these pieces are scored down through the middle on all of them, okay? So on that one there, that's a funny measurement, so I just shifted it along and then scored through the middle. This one here, you want to score at three and three eighths, which is the middle there. Then you want to put a curve into it, just so you start to create those kind of book pages. And I've done it with that one there. They're going to sit on top, we're going to stick the sides. But with this one here, which is the pattern paper, the reason I've cut it into two because like I said, otherwise yours would be six and a half by four and a half, which you can see it is there. But I've done it in half because I want this pattern around the bottom, you see here, and then I've got more of the pattern there. And the reason I had to cut it is because it's bigger than that size and I would have just lost all of this. But you'll see now that will end up going against this and it just looks really nice. You get to see all that detail. So if you've got paper like that and you've got one corner that's really nice and the other, then just cut them down. So each one is three and a quarter by four and a half. Okay. And again, you just want to pop, you know, that curve in them. And I've rounded off all of the corners there as well. Okay. So that's what you want to do. All the rest then will be the decoration. So I'm going to get rid of the scoreboard. And before we stick those pages all down, I'm going to stick down this inside and I'm going to stick that one on the front and all you've got to do there is add glue all onto this front half. Also if you want to do a piece inside here you'll want a piece that is two and a quarter by six and three quarters. Okay so I'm going to get all this stuck down. So that's stuck down yours won't have the score line there and you wouldn't have curved it but it's fine, I'm not too worried and you're not going to see the top because the bow will cover it. And then this one here, I put foam pads on the back and I put foam pads between the white and that piece there. And it's going to go here and you can, you know, it's a good way to do it. I mean, it's up to you. We're going to do all that separate. You might want to add this once you position that, but I'm actually going to put it on now because I know where I want it to go. So it's going to go in the same place as this one. So it's from the very outer edge of the card here so the pink it's about three quarters of an inch so again I just roughly yeah it's about there so, I'm so my silver lines up with the silver matte layer there and then I'm just making sure I keep everything nice and straight and it will join up perfectly with that end there and now that will hold that in place and you've got your easel
Okay, so with the pages, what I've done is I have got my hot glue gun on because I do use it to attach it actually onto the card itself. But what you want to do is run, um, is well, actually, you might find it a bit easier because I did say that during the live. Is you want to run a strip of tape, or you might want to do this using liquid glue. So, you know, watch what I do first, and then you can decide because this tape, once you remove it, you're going to stick it to give you the arches here of the book. Can you see? And, you know, if you want to get that consistent, you might find it easier to use liquid glue rather than the tape. But I'm just flipping each of those on over and just running just a strip of this. It's just to tack it in place. Um, and obviously the higher you go with the arches, then the thicker the card will be. But you want to try and keep it, you know, that kind of one inch so it will fit into that box. And actually that envelope box, if I haven't already linked it, I'll link it up here now. And um, I've got a 6x6 six six and I've got the 5x7 size there. These ones here, you just want to do it along the outer side. So for me it's the side with the pattern and where I've already rounded off the edges there. So, um, I actually will do one through this side, along this side as well. Because I need to obviously attach it. Um, again with these you want to do it through the middle so you can stick that all down or again you can use your liquid glue it's entirely up to you the reason I've done the score line through the middle is because it's I just think it's handy to have that guide just so that you, you know you keep everything lined up I think I've just got enough red tape to do here oh actually is that the bottom no that one I'm going to use my hot glue so right so you want to grab the base one and then this, no, that's the one that's going to have the hot glue on, which I've already done. So you do want to add it onto that one. It's near the end of the day now. Well, it is the end of the day. So once this is done, I'm relaxing for the evening. So let's just, there we go. So this one is going to stick into the center of the white one. So you just want to make sure you get your score lines lined up and you've got that little bit, because in this case, it's about that 1 16th of an inch because it was only a little bit bigger. But as long as you line up the score lines, don't worry about the outer edge, you know, the left and the right side. Just focus on the top and the bottom, getting that lined up. Okay, because what's going to happen is, is you're going to slide this up a bit and peel back the tape underneath and then stick it down and it will give you that little arch there. Okay, so actually you might find that easier to do now. So I'm going to take the back of that one off and then just kind of arch it up a little bit like so so now because that one's going to be arched up underneath but can you see probably could have gone a little bit higher but the whole thing's going to be lifted anyway so it it will be fine and i've got the other one to go on top so again like so okay so that's those two and then these ones i'm going to glue i'm going to, I'm going to stick make sure i've got them the right way because i wanted that yeah at the top there so again i'm going to take the backing off of this one Stick it right down into that score line. And I'm going to put ribbon through the centre of this. And then take the backing off of that one. And then again, come up a bit higher on this one. So you get that effect. Can you see these little arches? And it's what will give it that really nice book style. In there, and then again, bring this one up kind of similar to the other one there we go there we go okay and then I can take the backing off of actually I'm going to leave it off of there I'm just going to do the middle and first of all you want to grab your ribbon and you just want to make sure you've got enough ribbon that you can bring it around and I've just got that tape there that's what I've seen now that, that's sticking to like so then I've got a piece of silver which is going to go over again. Uh, is that just going to stick? Yeah, just about sticks, like so. And then I've got this pink piece, which is going to go over again. Okay, again, make sure. Yep, yeah, so mine's going to be that way up. So now you're going to stick it onto here. So I'm going to take my glue I'm going to put hot glue down through the middle again you don't have to do it this way 
and I'm going to stick this again following that score line right in the centre there. There we go. And then with these ones here, just take the backing off inside and then you're just going to kind of let it sit wherever it wants to. I'm going to pull it down a little bit, but like so. There we go. Okay, so again, this one here, just take the backing off. I just want to come down just a little bit. Like so. There we go. So now when it stands up, you have your book. Like so. Looks really, really nice. In fact, you can see I've gone up a bit higher on that one, but as I said in the video, I'm lower on that side and higher on that side, but it's a book and, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, when you turn the pages or when you have books open, they're, you know, they don't lay the same. So don't worry, you know, too much about that. But next, I'm just going to start bringing in all this decoration. So I build up two flowers and one little flower here. And then I've got this bow. So I've done a quadruple bow. So there's four pieces there that I've put together and then just tied off. And then I've just stuck behind a little... Um, charm there with the heart on so I'll pop that in now actually and that's going to go right at the top so again just might cover up any little bits you're not happy with or you know this is when you can start to hide all of those bits and pieces but I think that looks really nice I am going to be keeping this plain so that it's ready for someone you know if they ask me or if I need one for a special birthday then you know I can just add a birthday number to it or something so I'm going to add this one here you don't have to use the hot glue but um, I was using the silicon glue in the live and I wasn't happy with it at all I do prefer to use my hot glue because um, yeah I'm just I'm used to it and I just like it so I'm going to pop that one there and yeah I'm just going to carry on get this done it won't take me um, long at all I've already shaped all the flowers and I made all them um, not long after I'd done the live because I had everything laid out so I thought I'd get it all done so I'll be back when it's finished. Okay so there's the finished card all ready for me to have a lovely big number there and you can see just how great they look it really does make it a very very special card so this is definitely a mantle pleaser a showstopper card it's gorgeous and you can make this bigger you know if you've got eight by eight card blanks and have eight by eight as your book or you could do six by eight you know do some big ones and I will share the other one I would probably share it at the beginning because that's a larger size I think that's using a4 so they're, they're gorgeous cards to do they really really are and um, yeah I'm glad I've got the smaller size now so they do fit in the box I've shown you so there is that one like I said that's all being used this one is all ready now to be sent off. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. So yeah, thoroughly pleased with these. Love the um, papers as well from the Papercraft Society. Unfortunately, you know, those are subscription boxes. So that one is now, you know, gone out to everybody and they're using it. But, um, you know, if you are interested in subscribing to the Papercraft Society, I'll share the links below because there's always different kits by different designers every month. And they're just really fun. I, I thoroughly enjoy using them. And I think sometimes it makes you craft out of your comfort zone or sometimes you have things in there that you might not have necessarily chosen. But when you start to see the inspiration and follow other people that use them as well, I'm sure you will be inspired to use yours. So thank you for watching. I hope you like these. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It's much appreciated. And I'll be back very soon with another video. See you soon.